Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we are on, goodness gracious, week seven of our Dear Jane Quilt Along. Um, if you've been following me, you know that I use EQ8 add-on for my Dear Jane um, paper pieces, applique pieces, whatever you want to um, use in these. Um, I don't have the book, but I did see that the 25th anniversary of the book um, is pretty much exactly or very similar to what the EQA add-on is. So if you have that book, I think what you're seeing for me will be very familiar. Um, there is an older book. I don't know about that one, but you may be able to apply what I'm doing here to any of the templates or pieces that are in that book. So let me know. Let me know how you're doing the EQ8, or I mean the Dear Jane quilt, because there is lots of ways to do it. So the other thing I want to mention, I do this in every video, is if you don't want to go through the EQ8 stuff, you don't have EQ8, you're not interested, um, I have time codes to the block constructions down below in the description. So you can go directly to those blocks. So um, today we are doing the teal blocks that you see over here to the left. I'm going to place them into my color chart here. And then I'm going to quickly go through how these look as paper pieces. There are a couple I'm going to briefly talk about. And then TR7, I um, want to actually sort of redraw. So I want to show you what I'm doing with that and why I'm doing that. So let's start over here at our teal. We have B2 Sweetwater Tater Pie. So that's going to go there. And D12 Cross Swords, D12. And we have C12 right above it, which was Family Reunion. And H4, Abby's Eyes. H4 goes right here. And then TR7 is up here. So let me go over to the block work table and um, we'll quickly go through a couple of these and then I'll get into um, the few that I want to talk about. All right, I have B2 Sweet Tater Pie here. Um, this is what it looks like in my color. I'm going to go to Print and Export Foundation and Preview. And this is what it looks like as a foundation. So it's really not going to be too difficult to put together. Um, I'm going to decide at the time of sewing if I'm going to put the corner pieces onto my pie slices or if I'm going to put the total, the four center pieces together and the four outer pieces together and sew it as a big circle. So I'll let you know at that point what I decide to do. All right, back here at the block work table, I have D12 cross swords. I am using variation two on this. The reason I'm using variation two is because it's the applique variation so that here in the corners, we don't have to figure out how to sew these corners in. So I've colored it. Let's go to the um, foundation and preview that. And that's pretty easy. That's just the background. But if we go back here to templates, we will get our arrows here. And you don't need these pieces. You can just delete these. You just need these little arrows and we're going to applique those into the corner. So that's how I'm doing D12 crossed swords. So the next block is C12 family reunion. This one is going to be, it's going to just be a lot of labor. It's not going to be hard. I'm doing it foundation paper piece. And you can see that we have several of the same types of um, paper pieces to do here. So like I said, this one's not going to be hard. It's just going to be kind of labor intensive. All right, back here, we've got H4 Abby's Eyes. And I'm using variation two on this one because it breaks it down into four quarters. So we don't have to figure out how to put this diamond in the middle and do these Y seams. These are very small blocks. So when you're getting into like Y seams or even curves, you're talking pretty small pieces you're working with here. So I liked this one because it's four quarters and then we can just put the four quarters together and have the exact same block. So let's go to print export foundation, paper pieces and see all four quarters are exactly the same. So that's why I chose variation two. All right, we are at TR7 
And this one is called Norway's Fjord. I think that's how you say it. And this one at the very bottom, these curved pieces are going to be applique. And you can see here in the center, like this diamond right here. And then these pieces would be Y seamed in. And I don't have anything against Y seams. I just, I find them more difficult. And I think there's a better way to foundation paper pieces if you will go with me on this. So let me kind of show you what I want to do um, and see what you think. So last weekend I went into numbering and sectioning of paper pieces. So I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to be renumbering or sections, but I'm going to be going in there to show you how I am going to build this so there's no Y seams. And I'm not building it, I'm just modifying it. All right, so I want to come over here to draw. And well, first let's go to the foundation paper pieces. And you can see we've got these four pieces, or these three pieces right here that are all on their own, which means we are going to have to Y seam these in. So let's see what we can do to make it so we don't have to Y seam these in. All right, let's close this out. Let's go back to draw. So what I want to do in my drawing, since we have this square and this diamond right here that we will have to Y seam in, I'm going to take a line and I'm going to draw another vertical line here. And I'm going to draw a vertical line here. So. I have modified two vertical lines inside here, one right here and one right here. And what that does is it lets me make this into four sections. So let's go take a look at this. Let's go to the foundation paper piecing and it wants you to do it yourself. So I'm gonna start here in this one. I'm going to start down here Let's start at the bottom. Let's move our way up along this edge until we get to this point right here. I'm going to add that because we have this long seam right here. So this is a section that we can put together. Group it. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side and I'm going to group that. Okay, let's go up here. It's going to be pretty much exactly the same thing down here. I'm going to start up here on the left hand side. I can't add this top piece as a section because it's got this long seam. Our sections are going to be divided by this center line that I connected right there. So let's start over here. Group that. That's a section. And then we'll start up there with a tiny little piece. All these seams can be connected when you add a piece. So that's why we can group them. There's a group. Now we just need to group all our other small pieces out here to finish it out. So let's see what numbering EQ8 did. So we can start over here in A. So we can go A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. And this, I think the gray means that they've suggested a EQ8 suggesting it. All right, so over here on the right hand side, our second group that we did, we can do, and it shows a very light color B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. C section is this one right here. We'll start at the top and do C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So we have some corners coming together, but what we could do is start here at the bottom and work our way up so that our seams would be going against our C's. So we can go D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. What did I do? F1, G, oh, and this is E. So those are our numberings for our T7 Norway's Fjord. Let's see what it looks like. And there we go. Remember when we had all those singular pieces in the other one? 
I can actually show you because that's what I have printed. See, that's what it looked like before for our paper pieces. And now we have these nice bigger pieces to work with. So just to recap, I went back and I drew a line in this square and I drew a line in this diamond and I circled them before. So this is the square. This is the diamond where I drew the lines and that separated everything so that I could resection and renumber these. So that's what I'm doing with this one. You can do the same thing if you want to, if you don't want to mess with these tiny, tiny little Y seams, because I don't, I don't want to mess with them. Um, and it, I feel like it just gives you maybe a cleaner paper piece, but we'll see in the end, I guess. Um, you can watch me put it together and see how it goes. We will also on this one need to go over to templates and you see we have a lot of them, but this curved piece right here and right here is all we need for this. So you can delete all these other pieces and then it'll leave just these two curved pieces and you can print those out. All right, so there we go. There's all our pieces for the week. Um, you saw the paper pieces. You saw how I'm going to applique them. And um, now I need to put them together and see how it goes. So hit the subscribe button, notification bell, if you want to watch me do EQ8 things as I go along in this journey. If you're following along with me and doing your own quilt, let me know. Save your or post your pictures on social media with the hashtag DearJaneQAL. I will see them and I will share them. Um, it's just so much fun to see what colors everybody's choosing for their quilts. There are no wrong colors for this quilt. So everybody's quilt is going to be beautiful. But anyway... Let's get started making our blocks. All right, let's start B2 Sweet Tater Pie. You can kind of see with these how it's going to look, but that is the ultimate destination for this block. I don't know why I said that, but anyway, this is what we want the block to look like when we're done. So I have my pieces cut. I'm testing two different sizes with the blue and the white to see which one works better. And as you know, up to this point, or if you're new, I have a link down below to my website and I will put down the cut pieces like these that work for me if you want to use them also. So I've got the triangles that I'm going to use on the inside. I've got the rectangles I'm going to use on the outside. Um, there is a way I'm going to make this white piece. Yeah, it's the white piece in all four of these for me um, so that when you fold it, because Angles like this are really hard to work with sometimes. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut it so that it folds the correct direction. So I'm just going to do this piece and this piece, a corner and a center, before we put our circle together. Okay, here's the two pieces I'm going to do right here. I think what I'll do is just do them both right now. Set them up since there's just two pieces for each. Um, the first one I'll do is the center, and that's fairly easy. I've drawn it out. The blue is the number one piece, so that's right here, and my white is over here. So I have modified my cuts to be a little bit bigger than this. I think it will help a lot, but it is big enough. I just wish it was maybe a little bigger. I'm going to kind of line up my right angle of my triangle with the right angle right here this right angle right there and that puts me plenty over the line so I have no line showing for number one I'm going to pin that in place and we can trim that down I don't know how much of a quarter of an inch it is over but you can come over and you can trim it down not much to be trimmed And then we can take our white, which I do have a bigger piece for this. I'm testing out two different sizes, so I like the white size. So I am going to pin these two together with my paper and set that aside. I will then sew on the line with lock stitch at the seam intersections. Okay. This one's a little different. This is where I want to use my... Um, rectangles that I cut 
and I have drawn it out on the back. My blue piece is the number one. My white is number two. I'm going to put my two pieces together right now. Blue goes on the bottom because it's number one. I'm going to make sure I have coverage. Let's do this. I'm going to pull it over against here a little farther. So I have coverage around this edge, this edge. You can see this edge and you can, you can see that I have plenty of coverage at the seam. So I am going to, where's my pen? Oh, I left it over there. I need a new pen. I'm going to pin this up here with paper and fabric together. I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to trim my quarter of an inch. Trimming both pieces of fabric. All right. So if we turn this over because of this angle, this will now, this white piece will now flip over that way. So I'm going to get these, both of these sewn again, just right along here, lock stitch at the intersections. And I'll come back and show you how that folds over. All right. You can see I've sewn this together. So now let's fold it over and look at that. We have coverage and it's going in the direction we want to go. So that's how I'm going to do all my pieces here. This one will work too. Um, I'm going to get these ironed. I'm going to finish up all the rest of my pieces. And then we'll come back and put our block together. All right, there's my pieces um, trimmed up and laid out. Um, this one you don't really have to lay out per A, B, C, D. It's uh, pretty symmetrical. Each piece was made exactly the same. So there's a couple ways that this can be done. You could put the two small pieces together in each corner and then put quarters together. Or this is what I'm going to do because this is a small curve and for me it's just about getting my fingers and everything underneath my machine to work with a small curve. I'm going to put my circle together so I have a circle and then I'm going to put my outsides together like this so then I can pin my circle to the um, negative circle in here and have a bigger circle to work with when I'm at my machine. So that's what I'm going to do. I will um, before I'm going to put these together. I'm going to put my circles together. I'm going to put my outside together and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to insert this circle into that one. All right there's my center. And I didn't say how I was putting this together. It's just basically a four patch and I, I, I ironed my seams open. Same thing with this, ironed my seams open. So what I want to do now is I want to clip into, not to the seam, but just clip into the seam allowance all the way around. There we go. You can kind of see where I clipped it. This will help ease it in as I'm putting my circle together. Now, one thing that will help us is we have points to match. We can match these seams right here. We can match these seams right here and then so on and so forth all the way around. So we need to flip this. So this seam is going to match with this. So we need to flip it up like this. And this is where you're just going to have to take some time. I'm going to match my seams. And this is where I use pins. I don't use pins very often. <clears throat> All right. So now I'm going to twist it around. And match these two seams. The next seams there are, I'm going to match them up. They will actually nest. These are the paper piece seams, so they will nest there. And pin that. And 
and then we can start pinning in between and you can see that by making those notches it lays right along that curve very nicely so i'm going to go around first and do all my seams and then i'm going to come back and maybe put like one pin in the center here so i'll show you what it looks like in the end all right i have it all pinned up it looks like a disaster but it actually isn't um i've just had to peel the paper back in some places the fabric works better um going around than the paper does so that's why it looks so wrinkly but you can see like right here you know it's pretty well lined up with the uh with the bottom piece and leaving the paper on the bottom piece also helps you keep control of that circle um it keeps it flat so i'm going to use my actually my quarter inch foot to go around this and i'll just go slow I'll address any wrinkles I see. Um, I'll pull paper out of the way if I need to. And then um, I'll probably iron towards the corners because with the paper being on the bottom, I, I'm sure that's how the fabric is going to want to move. So uh, again, I'm going to use my quarter inch foot, slowly go around, watching for wrinkles, moving things out of the way, and um, we'll have the block done. All right, there we go. Got it done. Is it perfect? No. Is it five inches? Yeah! I'm going to take five inches over absolute perfection. So there you go. That's how I put it together. Let me know if you did it a little differently. Um, that's what the back looks like. This piece of paper probably can even be pulled off. Um, so yeah, curves are a little hard. Let me know if you're going to do the quarters. Once I started going around this, I was like, huh, maybe I should have done the quarters, but I really am not unhappy with the way that I did it. It's just curves are curves. They're just going to be small and they're going to be just a tad more difficult. So, but you know what? I feel like my seams look good lined up and I got a five inch block. So there you go. I am going with it. All right, let's move on to the next block, which is C12 Family Reunion. Got my cuts. This is going to be, this is just going to be labor intensive. This is not going to be hard. I have all my white squares for all the little white squares you see in there. I'm using blue. So all my blue squares inside here and then four large white squares in here. So I looked at it and all of these um, rows here, if that's what you want to call them, start with the one on the edge. So I am going to just put one of these together and then all of these out here will be exactly the same as this. So that's what I'm going to do. Just put one of these together and then I'll put the rest of them together. And then we'll put the puzzle pieces together. Keep the blue on the bottom because that's the number one piece. Lay it on here so that we've got a quarter of an inch at least here between one and two. And we have coverage here, we have coverage here, we have coverage in the corner. So I want to turn it over and I want to sew right along here, lock stitch at intersections. All right, there's my first two pieces. Let's turn it over and trim these up between L2 and L3, or between one and two, or two and three. And... I want another blue square here. Lay it down so it just matches in the same corners as the white that I'm putting it up against so that we have plenty of coverage out here. And sew on our tiny little line right there. All right, there's my three pieces along the bottom. Let's turn it over and we are going to trim between these bottom pieces I just did and the top piece. I'm going to take one of these big squares and line it up on my cut and make sure that I have coverage on either side of this line. 
and sew all the way across lock stitching at intersections all right there's my fourth piece put on you can see we've got coverage all the way around so all of these pieces are going to be the same as this or this bottom part so i'm going to finish all of these out and we'll get it laid out all right i got all my pieces made and trimmed and we have four of these larger pieces which are going to be the beginning of a square and i'm looking over here one of these big squares and then the uh checkerboard or whatever you want to call that nine patch that's a nine patch um so we need to make four of these. So I have the these four right here, and then I've got the opposite where I've got the white on the edges here, and then the blue. So I'm going to put these together in this nine patch, if that's what you want to call it. And then we've got one nine patch for the center that's going to go together like this. So I'm going to iron my seams open as I put these together. So when I come back... I'll have one of these in the middle for the middle and then four of these that go on the side. Okay, there's my pieces put together. Seams have been ironed open. <laughs> so this is our center. And we just need to make sure that our nine patches end up in the corners like that. All right, that's interesting. I did not foresee this coming. So we're going to end up with a Y seam corner. So if you don't want to do a Y seam, I should have seen this coming, but I did not. Maybe you did. You could take this square off. Well, let's do this. There we go. There we go. Should. All right. So we can sew these two together. And then we can sew this one to these two. Sew this, these two together, and that will go on this line right here. No Y seams. Woo! All right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is put these two together. And because of the way it's been ironed, our seams right there will nest. And I'm still going to iron my seams open. All right, I got my corner here put together. I also put together the row down here because I had to wait for my iron to heat up. And that didn't take very long. So we are actually just going to add this piece to this, iron it open, and then we'll add the bottom to the top and iron that open. The block will be done. And there you go. That is real-time block construction without a pattern with Carrie Canary Quilts. Oh, goodness. There we go. There's C12 Family Reunion put together. So at the back of it looks like it's a nice five inch square which honestly if i did not paper piece this this would not be a square block for me so there we go that was fun to do a little labor intensive but not too hard and kind of fun all right here we are working on d12 cross swords i'm using variation two because that utilizes an applique that's the block we're going for and this applique means that these corners do not have to be y seamed in don't have to figure that out so that's why i'm using variation two this is going to be a real easy block to put together we just did something similar in the last block you're just putting three together in a in a row and then this one's the same way and then you're going to add this long piece to it so i don't know should i show it or not maybe i'll real quick run through just in case you're just watching this one block, I'll run through that one real quick. Anyway, here's the pieces. I've got two white pieces that go here and this long piece that goes there. I've got four blue squares and then these are my applique. Um, I've just got them, I've transferred them to my fusible webbing and put my fusible webbing onto my fabric. So I just need to iron this down and it's ready to go. All right, let me get this one ready. All right, here's the piece I'm going to show real quick. Kind of drawn it out back here. I've got one, two, three, four. Blue, white, blue, white for my pieces. So my first piece is going to be a blue. My second piece is going to be a short white right here. So I'm just going to put them together like this. The blue is the number one piece, so that's going to go on the bottom. And I just want to make sure I have coverage out here. And then I'm about a quarter of an inch over the line. 
and I am. So I am going to sew from here on out and then lock stitch and lock stitch at the seam allowances. All right, there's my first two pieces. Turn it over, trim between A2 and A3. And we will add our next blue rec or not rectangle square. I'm lining it up with the white piece, and then we will sew on this line, lock stitch at seam intersections. All right, there's my first three pieces. Now we want to turn it over and trim along the long piece. Doesn't look like I'm gonna have too much to trim. Turn it over, take the one long piece I have, rectangle, and I'm going to line that up. Sew on the long line, lock stitch at intersections. All right, I finished this piece. I finished the one that was pretty much identical to this. And they need to go together, so we have to sew these together. And then I've cut these out. I have not pulled the backing off yet. I'll do that when I'm ready to applique. So... One thing I didn't tell you was when I traced my template, I used the seam line, not the seam allowance line. So just keep that in mind. So I need to put these together. Pretty simple. I'm just going to go edge to edge on this. Fits pretty perfectly. Pin it in place and sew along the line. All right, I sewed these two pieces together. I ironed it open and now I'm starting to put my applique on and I am just putting it in the corner, this point in the corner. And eyeballing it. It's going to look like that when it's done. All right. This could have been a potentially really difficult block to put together. But with the applique, it looks exactly the same and much easier and much quicker all right i'm gonna get that ironed down and we can move on to the next one all right we are on h4 abby's eyes variation two reason i chose variation two is because it's broken down into four quarters i feel like this will be much easier for me personally to put together than the other ones which i think had y seams in them and when you're talking, this is what it's going to look like when you're done. And when you're talking that tiny little piece in the middle with Y seams, then it's going to be, and that's what that, these little pieces are. That just seems like it's just going to be too hard for my hands. So this one breaks it down into four foundation paper pieces. So I have got four of the blue strips that are going to go here and I made it long enough that when you get these B1 and B2 or 1 and 2 sewn together, you can cut this section off and use it on the three section, the three piece. That's what I'm going to try to do. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know, but that's what I'm going to do. So here's my white and that's going to be for these four white strips. So I'm going to put one of these together because they're all four identical. All right, my kitty has decided to join me. Oh, you're too cute, aren't you, Jingles? That's what we're going for. Yep, you can see it. Here's my piece. And I've drawn on the back of it. So you need to take your blue, in my case blue, your dark piece. And we want to line it up so that we're a quarter of an inch between one and two right here. And all other lines are covered. And I'm going to pin this in place. And we're going to take one of these white strips I cut. And we're going to lay it along the blue. And when we flip it over, it'll we'll have coverage up here. So I'm going to get this sewn on. And uh, we'll come back and we'll I'll show you how I'm going to do the blue piece for my blue piece for number three. All right, there's my first two pieces put on. I am going to trim up between C2 and C3. And then I need to cut a piece for C3. 
this is too small throw that away but if we come over here we've got this piece we can just cut right off turn it over it is big but it will fit you can lay it at either way you want and we'll sew it on So on the line, lock stitch at intersections. All right, that's what it looks like sewn together. And we have coverage everywhere. I'm gonna do these three because they're all identical. And then we'll put the four quarters together. Hopefully by that time, Mr. Jingles will decide he needs to leave. So I'm gonna finish these up. All right, there we go. I got the other sections finished and I've trimmed this up and there are notches on the ends of these from EQ8. Um, I don't know what it's like in the books, but I trim those up. This is how it's going to be laid out so we can get this diamond shape in the middle. I, kind of, I have it oriented a different way. but So now basically we have a four patch where we want to put it together in rows like this. And, you know, we could iron to one side. Make sure you iron to opposite sides and then this center will nest. So I think I will do that. I will iron this this way and this part or this row this way. All right, there's my two halves and I did iron in one direction. And so this way, this side is going this way, this side is going that way so that when we put it together, I can nest those seams and we should have everything meet up correctly. All right, I'm gonna iron this seam open though. All right, there we go. Abby's eyes is put together and it is five inches. Looks great, not too hard to put together. I like that variation. All right, now we go on to our TR7, our border block. All right, let's get started on TR7 Norway's Fjord, I think is how you say it. This is what it's gonna look like in the end. And we have two applique pieces. These two little round pieces down here are appliqued on. So that's what I have printed here out of the templates. I wrote that I, in mine, I need blue color. So I've transferred them onto my fusible web. And you'll need to do each one because they kind of fit a little differently on each side. And uh, I use the solid line, the seam line. So... I've got this ready to be transferred onto just a piece of blue remnant I have here. All right, so that's the applique. Here's the actual block. And if you watched any of my EQ8 in the beginning, you saw that I changed this so that we have no Y seams. We don't, if you weren't, if you um, just did it the way they did it, you'd have a bunch of pieces in here that you would have to Y seam together. I went in, added a couple more seam lines, and it turned into four different sections here, which I think will just be much easier to put together. Personally, I think that. So I'll let you know as I go, but but you're not working with, um, this piece would have to be Y seamed in, and then these two pieces would have to be Y seamed into this. And by the time you get seams in there, they're gonna be tiny. So I am, let's, so let's go over my pieces. This big piece I have here is for my big A6 here. Um, the other blues, I just did a bunch of rectangles the same size to fit all of the blue you he see here, except for these triangles. I cut a couple triangles for those. The C or the whites, I'm sorry, the whites, These this big rectangle is going to go down here. And then the smaller rectangle is up at the top. And then these triangles will all fit the triangles you see here. And then this white square will be for this up here. And then the strips are for these side pieces. I think what I'll do is I'll put together D. This section is my D section right here. And these two will be similar, except you'll just be adding this A6 onto the other side of this. So I'm going to put just this section together and um, then we can put the rest of the block together. All right, here's the piece I'm going to show and I have drawn it out on the back. So my pieces are so close that the edge of the um, section is the blocks except for right here. 
And then these are all my seam lines. We're going to start up here at the top with one, and that's a white piece. But then we're going to be alternating colors. So blue, white, blue, white, blue. And then it just goes one through six down. So I found these in my stash. I do have measurements for this um, that I will put up, but I found these in my stash, so I'm just going to use them. And I'm going to put my white, which is gigantic, over top of the seam line between one and two. I'm just going to clip this right there. And then I'm going to take one of my blue rectangles. Actually, that was a triangle. I forgot that I made these little um, pieces triangles. So our triangle needs to be oriented like this. So I'm going to turn it over so that when it flips, it will be oriented like that. Make sure I've got quarter of an inch beyond my sewing line, my next sewing line right here, and I do. So I'm going to sew on this tiny little line, lock stitch it, intersections. All right, here's my first two pieces put on. Let's flip it over. Let's trim between D2 and D3. That's all I need to trim. So now we have our white triangle here. So I'm going to grab another triangle. And we can see that it needs to be oriented this way. So I'm just going to flip it over. Just make sure I've got enough coverage here, which I do because these are gigantic. So I am going to sew now on this line, lock stitch at intersections. Okay, there's my first three pieces. Turn it back over. Let's trim between D3 and D4. And now we want to use our blue strips here. This is a strip. So I made the strips plenty big. Line it up and sew on the line. So there's my first four peach pieces. Let's go between D4 and D5, and D5 is a triangle, so I'll be using these again. And we want our triangle to be oriented this way. So we need Huh. It's not quite the same shape, but it will fit because it's big enough. So, yeah. All right. So we're just going to center our triangle here and sew on the line. Lock stitch at intersections. All right. Whoops. Got ahead of myself here. Here's my first few pieces. Next, the last piece is our blue strip, so we'll take another, I already trimmed it. We'll take another rectangle and just make sure we got coverage and sew on the line. All right, there we go. That's how you do one of these sections. The others are very similar, if not pretty much exactly the same. Um, I will have my cut sizes up on my website, which is, there's a link down below. But I'm going to finish all my sections and then we'll come back and we'll start assembling this block. All right, here's my sections put together. And then I went ahead and cut these from my pieces. I'm um, still thinking about how I'm going to put these on, but we'll get there. Like I said earlier in the video, real-time block building with Carrie. All right. Well, what we need to do here is we need to create a straight line right here. So we have to put our pieces together from top to bottom. So, you could line it up. I cut the notches out. You could line it up so your notches line up right here. Or you could use the pin method and put a pin through here so that it comes out right there. And then line your block up that way. All right. I'm going to use my notch method. And I'm going to sew, and I think I will iron it open. So, same thing over here. 
Let's line it up. Okay. Notches are weird on this one, so I'm going to use the pin method. Put a pin through right here. And then right there. And then I'm just going to keep my pin straight, rotate my piece around. All right, that's what I thought it was going to be, but I wasn't sure. If you cut the notches out, this point will land on the side of your bottom piece. All right, so either method. I'm going to get these sewn, and again, I'm going to iron the seams open. And we're back with real-time quilt block making with Carrie. I didn't see that coming. Should have, but I didn't. But that's not going to be hard. That is a very slight angle that we've got to put together. Y seam, basically. All right. So we have to put these two together. Let's start at the top. I'm going to use the pin method for this to make sure I'm in the right spot. So Whoosh. I'm going to put a pin through there. And a pin through that corner. All right. Okay. There's my pin. I've got it straight. So I want to clip it. I want to turn when we hit that right there. Which would be right there. So when you hit the middle of this seam, that's when we're going to want to... Pull our foot up and then start pulling this over to make a right angle. All right, let's go over to my machine. Let's give this a shot. All right, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start sewing down this side. I'm using my quarter inch foot. And then I'm going to stop right inside the seam. Okay. And I'm going to lift this up. And I want to start to turn this. And you're going to have to pull your fabric up here. But you want to turn it so that you have edges that line up over here. Now we're going to put it back down. Get over the hump. Lock stitch at the corner. Okay. Let's see how this turned out. We want to turn when we hit that right there. which would be right there. So when you hit the middle of this seam, that's when we're gonna want to pull our foot up and then start pulling this over to make a right angle. All right, let's go over to my machine. Let's give this a shot. All right, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start sewing down this side. I'm using my quarter inch foot. And then I'm going to stop right inside the seam. Okay. And I'm going to lift this up. And I want to start to turn this. And you're going to have to pull your fabric up here. But you want to turn it so that you have edges that line up over here. Now we're going to put it back down. Get over the hump. The 
lock stitch at the corner. Okay, let's see how this turned out. I mean, didn't turn out terrible. I think it turned out pretty. We want to turn when we hit that right there. Which would be right there. So when you hit the middle of this seam, that's when we're going to want to pull our foot up and then start pulling this over to make a right angle. All right, let's go over to my machine. Let's give this a shot. All right, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start sewing down this side. I'm using my quarter inch foot. And then I'm going to stop right inside the seam. Okay, I'm going to lift this up and I want to start to turn this. And you're going to have to pull your fabric up here, but you want to turn it so that you have edges that line up over here. Now we're going to put it back down. Get over the hump. Lock stitch at the corner. Okay. Let's see how this turned out. I mean... Didn't turn out terrible. I think it turned out pretty good. There is a hump here in the middle though, where all those seams meet. Might be able to trim some of that out. All right, that kind of helped. I think I'm gonna try to iron this open. See how that works out. All right, I ironed my seams open. Then I kind of trimmed around in here to help that lay down a little bit better and it did so it lays pretty flat looks pretty good um the next thing we need to do oh i cut my appliques out that's what those are next thing we need to do is put our side pieces on and our shorter piece goes on the left side and i don't usually leave my paper pieces on for these singular pieces but i think i will for this one um, so what I did was I put right sides together. I put my pin through this corner and through that corner, straightened it out, and then came along and pinned it up here. So I feel like that should work. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't, but I'm going to sew this on and let's iron towards the strip because we're going to be sewing across the top of it also. So that will probably hold it down. All right, let me get this sewn. Again, real-time block making with Carrie. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Again, I iron towards the strip. Put right sides together, grab my pin, and line my pieces up. Put it through this corner and then we'll find this corner there we go straighten our pin out turn our piece keep our pin straight all right line up the edges Sew it on and iron towards this strip. All right, there's my two sides on. That worked out pretty good. Like I said, I don't usually leave paper on small strips like that, but that worked. So the piece we're putting on now actually needs to go on like this. 
So we need to flip it over. It has notches, but I sometimes I'm not sure what notches mean. So let's put this in at the point. Oh, I can't see that one. Can't see that one. Oh, I guess I can see that one. All right, I can see that one. So let's put it in down here. There we go. All right, we're going to sew along this line right here. And then I am going to iron towards that triangle. Okay, my pin method didn't seem to work. I'm off a little here and here, and that's about the same distance. So I think I'm just going to shift it over. So I need to rip it out. All right, here's my piece. I've ripped it out. So it looks like instead of doing the pin method, I'm going to line the point up here and line up my notch over here on the edge. So I'm going to give that a shot. All right, that worked. That's good enough for me. I'll take it. I don't want to rip it out anymore. So now we need to do our applique, but what we need to do is come up a quarter of an inch from the bottom is where we want to place our applique. So I'm just going to take a ruler, lay it on the bottom, and this one's going to go here because it fits with that seam the best. And then this one will go here because that fits with the seam. And then I need to lay them. That's where I need to place them is right butted up against that quarter inch seam. All right. Let's pull this off. Put my quarter inch down. There's one, there's the other one. All right, so our seam allowance should run right below our, um, our seam line should run right below our applique. So let's get those ironed on. All right, if you haven't done this, you could leave this bottom seam allowance on and then do the top seam line when you're, co when you're copying this over. And then you would be sewing through your applique if you want to do that. Oh my goodness. I'm going to be brutally honest. I did not expect TR7 to be that difficult. Um, I shouldn't say it was difficult. That was a little difficult. That I, I think I was so... Um, trying to get away from doing Y seams up here that I didn't even think about that point, but that is such a small curve to make that it wasn't hard to make at all. So I'm still happy with the way I did it. And again, you can just do a quarter inch longer here if you want to sew through your applique if you don't want to figure out that quarter inch. But yeah, it's pretty. I like it. Um, let me know how it's going for you also. How did this block go for you if you've done it? All right, there's all the block constructions. I went through some EQ8 stuff on how to uh, redraw so there weren't any Y seams there. Um, let me know if you want to see less or more in the block construction. Um, I kind of approach it as if someone's coming to this block for the first time, but if you want to see less, let me know, or maybe even more, let me know. Um, just let me know how I'm doing. Anyway, let's add my blocks. Um, I've got my photos in here and I want to add them to my photo chart. So I've got TR7. Uh, which one is this? C12. There's C12. We have D12, which is this one. And H4, which is Abby's eyes. And b2 sweet tater pie all right so that's what my quilt's starting to look like um i think it's looking pretty good uh if you want to know how i did this photo chart you, I, i'll link the video down below for you if you have the eq8 add-on i do have eq8 and the dear jane add-on in the description i've links to them in the description below 
But anyway, this was a lot of fun. I had fun doing these. They were, a um, couple of these were a little more challenging and one was pretty labor intensive. So it's always fun to do these. And um, again, I have the links to my paper cut sizes in the description below also and my website. But anyway, thanks so much for following along. Let me know how it's going for you. Link your art, share your blocks on Instagram, Facebook. You can tag Canary Quilts and hashtag Dear Jane QAL, and uh, I'll share them with everybody. But anyway, hit the subscribe button notification bell, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!